Greetings, everyone. Welcome to uh, Pop Up Live Q and A today. We are live on Facebook and Instagram. Let's see. Um, it says we're live. There we go. Okay, great. So welcome, and while everybody's uh, showing up, uh, there's a few things I wanted to just chat about. And I'll be talking more about this on Friday because it's uh, sort of a, a big inspiration for me, kind of an aha. So for those of you who've been following along, you know that I've been doing a 33-day program where every day we meet a small group of us and we meditate for 20 minutes, raising our vibration every day, doing a practice we call running your energy. And so I've been helping this group. The theme of this group is stepping into more courageous leadership. And so, hey, Darren and uh, Bess, great. And so as we've been, we've all been stepping into more of this courageous leadership, I'm doing the same thing. There's always another level to reach up to and aspire to, and we're all growing. And as a matter of fact, uh, one of the things, the most important things I learned in this school that I used to attend, uh, I went there every week for 12 years. This is how I learned to really fine tune um, my expertise as an energy worker, energy healer. And one of the things that they mentioned in there is how every person that comes to you becomes a reflection of you. So like as healers, it's really important to realize that we are not healing anyone. Hey, Crystal. Um, <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, I just lost my thought. So um, yes, at the school, um, Yes, yeah, so everybody that came to this school became a mirror. So we don't really heal other people, obviously. I mean, that's, um, some people don't know that we don't really heal you. <laughs> we just have an expertise as being, uh, to being able to show you the places that are blocked and help you um, release these energies so that you can heal yourself. And so every person that came to us in this clinic became a mirror for all the places that we wanted to heal. And so this is one of the, the amazing ways that I was able to uh, help heal and deprogram a lifetime of having been born and raised in a religious cult, the cult of Jehovah's Witnesses. And I left when I was 38 and suicidal. So uh, the point being is that People that, like if you're a healer, if you're a coach, if you're some kind of person that helps other people, you need to start using this as an opportunity to see the reflection, to see all the things that are being brought to you. Those are all messages on how you can heal yourself. And so the same is, is true for today. You know, today I'm, I'm doing a, a pop-up Q&A for people you have questions, uh, post them in the threads on uh, Facebook and Instagram, and then I can um, scroll through and, and see what your questions are. Um, so, um, and so one other thing is that what we've been doing in this 33-day uh, program, Stepping into Courageous Leadership, is I had this aha after listening to a uh, video the other day and I, I really only listen to high vibrational videos, messages. So I always measure first. This was a transmission from uh, the Palladians. <clears throat> and so it resonated at infinity and it was about the reptilians. And so I, I just wanted to see what they had to say. And um, it was uh, very interesting in that they mentioned how uh, we actually have created the reptilian energy. And also that would refer to the 1% energy that I'm always talking about, the suppressive influence that's on the planet. So it's a lot like um, the woman who keeps manifesting that guy who just keeps beating the crap out of her. And you know she'll get rid of that guy and then she brings in a new guy and does the same thing. Why? Well, we're all starting to awaken and to have enough knowledge and information and realization 
to know that that keeps happening, not because of bad luck, just because, not because she just got tricked or whatever. It has to do with her vibrational frequency that she's emitting, right? We all know this now. And so if she keeps emitting that energy of being victimized and taken advantage of, <clears throat> that's what she's going to keep manifesting and creating. The same thing is true for this reptilian and 1% energy. We as a collective keep creating this and it becomes like this vicious circle. This 1% cannot exist on their own. They must feed on these darker, lower vibrating energies. This is how they, they operate. And so that, this is why they keep stirring up. Next round of fear, next round of virus, next round of riots, next round of some kind of pandemonium, whatever it is, they're gonna think of something new. And so this is why in this program, we've been learning how to step into our courageous leadership so that we can stand in this high vibration, grounded, confident, certain, so that we're not afraid. We're not feeding the beast. And so this is, um, this is the new tangent that I'm on <laughs> and uh, the direction I'm really going to be um, directing people. To me, it, it feels exciting because it's a whole nother level of being able to be accountable for everything we create. Like, imagine that we create the reptilian and 1% energies. That knowing that means that then we can uncreate it. How? By stop buying into all the fears finding the fears in our energy field. So this is what I do as a living. I help people find these fears, find these programs that hold the fears in place so we can release all this crap and we can stop being this whole feeling victimized, feeling like we need a savior. You know, whether President Trump, uh, you know, he's draining the swamp, that's great. I love that. But really whether he gets elected or not, it, it actually doesn't matter who gets elected. If we're taking responsibility for what we're creating in the world, meaning we, we are not uh, creating more of the fears that feed the beast, that feed the 1% and reptilian energies, then this is how we create this new world. This is the beginning. And so I think it's great that so many people are, are, have gotten the clue that, oh, I manifested that abuser. Well. Yes, and then they start doing the inner work, right? They start doing the inner work that starts helping them uncreate that abusive relationship that keeps showing up. It's the same thing with this 1%. So um, this is my new tangent, and <laughs> this is what I'm going to be talking about more on Friday. So I'm sure there's more information that's going to show up. So I got my big glasses today. <laughs> Let's see what we have. Um, any questions? I would like to know. Okay, so here's Darren, which is Layla. Thank you for reminding me that every time, because I will forget. Um, I would like to know why I'm not attracting money like I used to. Okay, great. So, um, wow. Um, so, as we all know, we are manifesting um, what's the vibrational thing that's going on in here. So, uh, Darren, Layla, <laughs> um, <clears throat> let's measure your money vibration first to see what that, where that is, and then we'll know how far. And so others of you who are also on either of these threads that have this low vi money vibration, you can also um, follow along with this, and we're going to see where Layla is. So her money vibration is at 500. That's a very common level. Um, it's the vibration of love according to the old Hawkins scale, uh, which is a very low vibrational love, by the way. Um, so if we, if we look that kind of love money, it's like, yeah, I, I, I really appreciate when it comes around and I like having money, um, but you don't really have a, an intense appreciation and um, like this feeling of bliss about money. 
maybe you feel a little bit betrayed by money. Maybe it lets you down. Maybe it's um, not showing up because we've bought into this whole program of fear. So let's see where uh, Layla is struggling with this money vibration. In the root, so this is really common. In the root chakra, the root is responsible for our feeling safe and grounded and certain and confident. And money is a big factor in that. If we are living <clears throat> in that scarcity and lack mode, then money, not, not having enough money is going to perpetuate that. So out to the third layer. So we're going to go out to the third layer. And those of you who are also struggling with this as well, just follow along, do the same thing. And so the idea is that you start t taking responsibility for yourself by not coming here to just, you know, have me do your work for you and clear things out, but come here to learn how to do this. So there's a circle of energy that radiates around that root chakra. We call it the worry circle because that's what it holds is a bunch of worry. And Layla's is kind of stuck out to that third layer of her aura. So we're going to pull in that energy and we're going to send it down the grounding cord. So all the worry, anxiety, stress about money. <clears throat> and we're just going to send that energy down the grounding. Excellent. <laughs> okay, great. Um, there's also some energy in your sixth chakra, Layla, where you have some thoughts out to the third layer. So we're going to go out to the third layer, both front and back of your sixth chakra. This is where all the beliefs are held. And this is where everything that we create starts, is with our beliefs. We create everything by what we think about. And this is why the 1% has been so effective in keeping this loop going, is they know that fear is the greatest paralyzer on the planet. And so they, they're going to keep stirring that up. So let's, in the sixth chakra, we're going to pull in that energy, any beliefs that have you thinking that you're powerless with money. Money is just a manifestation of what's going on in here. If you're thinking that money is going to save you, money is the answer to all your problems, that's an external thing. And that's uh, not part of the new paradigm where we go inward. It's kind of an oxymoron. We have to go inward to expand, but it's true. So going inward and finding these programs, so this program that we think we're powerless with money, is a lie. So we manifest based on how abundant we feel in our own energy field. And that happens when everything is aligned in high vibration and flowing. <laughs> okay, great. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So next, and everybody can participate in this, you can, um, we're going to raise your money vibration. So um, we cleared those two energies, but if your money vibration is still low, that's what you're going to keep manifesting. So I want you to go out and imagine a big pile of money sitting out in front of you. You can make it as big as you'd like. And we're going to attach a grounding cord to the bottom of this pile of money. And we're going to start sending this grounding cord to the center of the earth. And make it, you know, big, uh, not a skinny little string. And we're going to start draining out all the people and their beliefs that are bringing your money vibration down. And again, if any of you have um, a question, something you want me to look at, put it in the thread and I'll check it out when I'm, I'm done with this. So um, we're going to start draining out all the people and energies that are bringing your money vibration down. And so you can all follow along and do this. So I want you to start to imagine first, let's see who is bringing this down. I'm going to check several energies. So first your parents. Um, your mother, no. Your father's beliefs, no. Um, how about your children, no. Uh, partner, okay, we have a partner. 
Uh, so partners, and this could also apply to any of you out there who have um, exes, like past partners who might still be in your money pile, hoping you will be a fa failure now that they're gone. So let's drop all of these uh, present partner and past partners down our grounding card. Okay, great, thanks, Unamazed. I'll get to your question in a minute. Um, sending all those energies down the grounding, great. So now let's check for um, well-meaning family. Yes, so drain them down that grounding cord sending it down to the center of the planet. And you should do this every day. As a matter of fact, the 20 minute meditation I have both in Facebook and Instagram and the, the link there, you can um, download a 20 minute meditation where you can practice this every day. The last few minutes um, relates to your money vibration. So you can do the whole thing every morning. So you stay in these high vibrations. So, uh, well-meaning family, yes. So let's drain that one well-meaning family down your grounding cord. They mean well. <laughs> and any well-meaning friends, okay, good. Uh, any people you owe money to? All right, there wasn't anybody there. Um, anybody we've forgotten? No. And then last but not least, in fact, this is the most important, so don't forget it every time you clear your money pile, is to drain out the 1% and the reptilian energies out of your money pile. So we just keep finding more and more of the places that they infiltrate. And then eventually, like today, I was noticing how it just seems like it's just residual energy now. It's like, oh, there's some more, there's their dust. <laughs> okay, good. If you're not used to this, you will need to keep doing it until they're not there anymore. Okay, so let's check the money vibration now. So now it's at infinity, which is where we want our money vibration to be, at this high vibration of infinity. So you think that, well, that might, might be great, that's awesome. Except that now we need to be aligned in all of your energy field with this high vibration of money. So we're going to imagine a liquid gold stream of energy coming out of this money pile down into all the rings that are stacked above your head. This is how you create with this high vibration of um, money. <laughs> we're, this high vibration of money is going to come down through the rings and it's going to start recalibrating your dreams, desires, goals, intentions that are held in these rings. so that what you create with money is in your highest and best interests. So as we bring this down into the rings, down into your crown. So right there, this is where you need to give yourself permission to have, be, and do with money as you choose. But right now, that 1% energy is in your crown, trying to prevent you from accessing your personal permission. So the thing that you, you need to remember too is that this 1% can't live without generating more fears. If we stop buying into the fears, they will die and they will stop existing. So um, it, it's kind of like when the vampire, you know, and it, it, you expose them to the light, <laughs> you open the shades and then they, the sun and they just like wither and melt. It's kind of the same thing. So um, we're pulling in this energy at the crown, this 1% influence, lifting them up and out of your crown. Okay, then we're gonna go back to bringing this money down through your crown. It's gonna go down through the central core through your six, five, four, so it's stopping right at your heart. Let's go out to that third layer because you have this belief in there and this is part of the 1% programming uh, and this whole perpetual loop that we, we keep keeping in place is that need to prove your worth and value. It's an old program 
And so we're just gonna pull that out and just drop it down the grounding cord. Cause you don't, there's really nothing to prove. You're already valuable. <laughs> You're already enough. You're already lovable. So we're just gonna drop that energy down the grounding. Excellent. As we continue to bring this high money vibration down through the heart into the solar plexus, where it's stopping again, because you also have another belief in there that you have to work hard for your money. Like some people actually believe that's true. It's like, what? Well, yeah, I, you do have to work hard for your money. That's true. It's actually not, <laughs> it's a lie. It's an old program. So we're just gonna pull that program into the core. We're just gonna drop it down your grounding. Excellent. As we bring this high vibration of money down through the solar plexus, down into that second chakra, good. Down the root, so it's spilling down the root. Now all of your chakras have been recalibrated, but let's catch the front now. Let's make the front of all of our chakras equally in this high vibration. So we're gonna bring that money vibration up the front, close to the spine through that second chakra into the solar plexus, into the heart, throat, six crown rings. And then it's gonna cascade down through all the layers of your aura. And then below your feet, it's gonna merge with your grounding cord. That's how you clear your aura. Let's see if there's any layers of the aura that need to be recalibrated. 15th layer but we're going to go to the bottom first and we're going to start at the bottom of this layer and we're going to start lifting that one percent energy up out because we've been instructed to start sending these energies off planet and uh, through that central core all the way to the center of the galaxy excellent so now um, 15 We're gonna jump out to the 30th layer of our aura where the reptilian energy hang out. So again, we're gonna start at the bottom <clears throat> and we're gonna lift these energies up, up, up and out as we send this all the way through that central core above our head off planet. And we're gonna back up a second though. We're gonna go back to that 15th layer and we're gonna let the money, that high vibration of money recalibrate this 15th layer so that uh, they're not in that layer. <laughs> Our high my money vibration is in that layer. There we go. And we're gonna do the same thing with the 30th layer. It's like paint being poured over a balloon. Excellent. Okay, great. And so uh, the last part of running your energy with this high money vibration is to run the energy through the circle of reciprocity. So giving starts with receiving. So we're gonna bring the energy out that right arm. If it's backwards in here, I don't know, but we're gonna uh, bring the energy out that right arm. That's the giving masculine side. So it stops right about at your shoulder. So we're just gonna keep pulling that energy out that right arm. And then we're gonna join the fingertips together so that the energy passes through not only the palms, but through all the fingertips. And as you bring that energy into the left hand, your receiving side, so if you're not receiving money, it's not because, I think someone's about to knock on the door. <laughs> we'll ignore it. Um, okay, good, <laughs> sorry. Um, Receiving, yes. So if you're not receiving, it's not because of other people. It's because of us. So this is next level, taking responsibility for everything we create. So allowing yourself to receive means you need to create some vulnerability and surrender. This is how you, all you control freaks out there. I used to be one, so I can say that. Um, 
that you have to start allowing the surrender to happen. And okay, so as it's coming up that left receiving arm up to the shoulder, bringing that receiving in, feminine receiving through the shoulder, then down through the front and back of the heart, through the front and back of the throat, it's creating a circle simultaneously through that sixth chakra, through the crown, through all the rings. Okay, great. That's how you manifest more money vibrationally. This is how you get this part in order and aligned so that then you can start sending this frequency aligned out into the world and then start seeing what what uh, starts happening. I um, posted a really great um, memory of a testimony that I did about um, two years ago. Uh, if you haven't seen it, listen to it. It's on Facebook. Sorry, Instagram. You might have to go to Facebook to watch it. Um, or we can post it on Instagram. Right, Roma? <laughs> My lovely assistant. Thank you so much, Roma, for all you do, all your help. Um, so anyway, uh, he was, I had done this with him, and he had been unemployed for about four months, was working for a very big corporation, making lots of money, and uh, had been unemployed for four months when we did this. And when I was done, he happened to open his phone. I think I, I know I went to go do something. He opened his phone, and when I came back, his, like, his jaw was hanging down, and he was speechless. And he, he told me that someone had just deposited $150 in his bank account. And then that night, he got a, an email from someone who he had, you know, been trying to work things and sending emails out and so forth. And he got an email that night that said that uh, him and his partner had gotten the funding that they had been working on. And it was $250,000 in grant money. So, and then he said over the next week or 10 days, like more and more things just kept happening. Like someone would take him out to lunch. He would randomly run into someone that, um, you know, owed him some money and volunteered to pay him back. It was just like, so if you haven't seen the, the, the testimony, it's actually really great. But anyway, I never know how you're going to manifest. It's up to you and you, what you want to create. But let's see what other questions there are. Let's see if you have some more questions. Um, Was a question here. <laughs> um, 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 um. Uh, Ditke Everdeen, long time no see. I have remember you from uh, from Florida. Let's see what she has to say. Very upset lately, knowing the truth of what's going on. Yes, yeah, so. Um, talking about feeling very angry about everything that's uh, going going on in the world. So let's see if, so for those of you who are angry here today, uh, let's measure where that anger is, because this is how I operate, is you can't really know what you're trying to clear unless you know what there is, like how much of anything. So this is why I love measuring. So let's see how much anger is, is here with those of you who have shown up. And this will also relate to those of you who come on, even though you're listening to this as a recording. Um, 95%. So that, uh, at that level, you're going to, well, let me just back up. At 50%, you're, you're going to feel just kind of, you won't even think you're angry. You just might feel annoyed or frustrated or irritated and kind of that buzzy annoyance where you're always judging yourself and, and uh, being hard on yourself. But at 95%, um, you're going to feel a little more on edge for sure, if you're in your body all the way. But one of the ways that a lot of people cope with their anger and their frustration, because they can't seem to get away with that, or get away from it, is they get away from their bodies. They, they are not fully occupying their body. So uh, let's see how far in your body you are, Didike. 
I, I don't know if that's how I hear say your name. I'm sorry. Um, let's see. So yeah, you're only in your body 50% because it, it doesn't feel comfortable, all this anger. So uh, let's see where you're holding this anger so I can help you let this go. And those of you who are on, just follow along. You notice if you also feel some relief from this as well. So the first place is right here in the sixth chakra. So there's some beliefs that are causing you to feel angry. It goes out to that third layer. So it's the belief that you're powerless, that you are um, maybe feeling victimized. Uh, and so this is going along with the whole energy. Um, if you came on a little late, you may have missed what I was talking about in the beginning. And this is kind of a, <clears throat> a new revelation in that we actually create this 1% and reptilian energy. And so if that's kind of hard to wrap around, you, you know, wrap your head around, um, it's a little easier to realize and relate to this idea of women who are abused or victimized and how they keep creating that, that guy that keeps showing up. It's because she is emitting the frequency that attracts that. She has the programs that keep attracting that. So it's the same thing with this 1%. We are holding a program in, in our energy field. Here it is in the sixth chakra showing up where we feel powerless, where we feel victimized and, um, and there's also a certain fear in here where, um, of course the, the, the gardeners would show up right now. <laughs> um, so that, uh, the fear, okay, let's see what fears are here. So one is a fear of failure. Let's pull that into the core. A fear of not doing enough. Let's pull that in. <laughs> and then, um, another one is a fear of our own power. So uh, our greatest fear is, is not that we are powerless, but that we are powerful. We, are, we have no idea how much we don't know until we, until we get to a next level and we go, oh, I had no idea. So we're just sort of inching along, inching along, inching along, realizing, oh, I create everything, including the 1%. Wow, okay. Exciting, now I can uncreate it. Okay, great, so here's, that's how we do this. So uh, 6%, I mean six chakra, six, five, in the heart. We're gonna go into your heart, okay? And um, out to that third layer. So this is that proving your worth and value. If, if you have this belief that you're not worthy to get what you want or to create what you desire uh, unless you prove that you earned it or you prove that you're worthy of it that's this endless loop we're already worthy so let's pull that energy out of this um, heart i'm going to send it down the grounding and we're pulling all that anger and rage and so this is since we're talking about anger this is how you've been motivating yourself. You know, if you beat yourself up hard enough, then you're gonna get that thing done. So let's uh, pull all those judgments out of the heart. It's a hard way to motivate ourselves. We wanna step into our passion and what excites us. And so uh, let's see where, where else there is some anger. In the root, out to that third layer. So this is where you use anger to motivate yourself and um, get things done. It's uh, not, the thing about using anger as your power is that it's not our real authentic power. It's a big energy, it can get stuff done, but it's not our real power. So let's pull that anger out of the root and we're just gonna drop it down the grounding Excellent. <laughs> That's great. Thank you, uh, Agatha. She says, it's amazing how good I feel just watching you. 
Well, you're starting to match the energies. And so you can do this on a daily basis. You can feel good every single day just by doing what we're doing here. So let's go back to measuring this anger now, uh, Dev K. And it's down to 15%. Let's see where that last 15% is because we want to get all of it. So you can see how beneficial being able to measure this stuff is. Like you could have just, you know, a lot of healers, they do their thing and then they, they hope that works. But now we know there's still 15%. We want to get all of it. Seven. So we're going to go back up to the sixth chakra, out to the third layer. So we just cleared this. So it's, since it's still back, then I want to, it makes me want to check for something else. Um, so there's a fear entity in here that's holding this fear in place or the anger in place um, out to that third layer. So we're going to pull this fear entity into the core of your sixth chakra. And there may be others here who may also have this same entity that keeps that anger in place, keeps you thinking that that anger is how you get things done. And it's not. Anger is how you feed the beast. <laughs> That's exactly the opposite of what we want to do. Okay, great. So we're just going to drop that anger down the grounding. And instead of using our anger, so this is another important thing about anger, is that um, oftentimes we feel angry because we don't feel heard. We don't feel understood. And so this really important part, uh, kind of follow up to anger, is that one of the ways that we prevent ourselves from, from, you know, more anger building up again is that we start stepping into the power of our voice. We start saying what's working and not working. We start asking for what we need. We start saying what we prefer. And little by little, we start to feel heard. We start to feel understood. We will stop that then the anger really has no place to build up. That's usually when we get angry, it's because we haven't taken the time or the courage or responsibility to stand up for ourselves with our voice. And then everything just builds up. So make sure that you use your voice so the anger doesn't build. So let's see where the anger is now. Um, zero. So, uh, Ditke, it'd be great if you um, put maybe a little something in here to see, so we can see, do you feel a difference? Do you feel calmer? And um, I know this works, but I'd like to hear it from her, so you can all hear what she has to say. Uh, okay. Uh, so Tara has to say, if we work consistently on staying clear of fear entities and all the other blocks, what is the next step to live differently? New behaviors, beliefs, habits. Exactly. <laughs> um, this is this is becomes the new practice. When we're in these higher vibrations, it's a lot easier to access new ideas, new beliefs. Like we just think differently at this higher vibration, where joy and bliss and amusement and fun live then when we're down in the anger and the fear and the resentment and and the worry you you think completely differently on these two levels so when we're in these high vibrations we we start to think differently and as we know our thoughts is what creates our new world our new identity this is how we're going to create this new society this new culture that we're all living into I'm trying to stay away from that phrase new world because there's a new world order that's a very satanic kind of a thing. And there's also this new world that wants to create out of more um, lighter vibrations. But I'm gonna start talking about a, a new society and a new culture, which is what we all wanna create. So in these higher vibrations where we start creating with these new thoughts that are up here, then we start listening to those inspirations and we start taking inspired actions. We don't take that inspired thought, bring it in and then start analyzing the hell out of it 
until we kill it <laughs> and then we put it on a back burner because we prioritized it and we can't do it until we do this other thing and, and then before you know it, it's dead. If an inspiration comes in, start taking action. That's the only way we're gonna create any changes for the future. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Uh, um, yes, you're so welcome. Um, yes, Ditke says she feels calmer. Really appreciate it. Great. Um, when are you going to do a live with Kate? I have no idea, Fish. When Kate uh, wants to, we will certainly do a live. We've, we did a live when we were in Peru, but certainly do a, love to do another live with her. Thank you for the suggestion. And what is it that you wanted us to talk about? Put that in there and um, I'll discuss that with Kate. Um, let's see what else. Maybe some people I haven't talked about talked to before. Okay, so let's see what we have on Instagram. Lots of people showing up. Great, lovely. So nice. <laughs> so many people. Okay, great. Um, with how I can... That's great, Debbie. She says she's healing herself and putting up boundaries with how I communicate and speaking my truth. This is super important. You just have to use... Uh, your clear, authentic voice to set those clear boundaries. Oops. Um, and Crystal, she's in Amasa's new 18 day. Great. That's my mentor. Um, share my blind spots. Okay, Crystal. Let's see where Crystal's blind spots are. Um, in your root chakra. 15th layer so that would make sense the the one percent they they like to be try to be invisible that's why they go way out to the 15th layer hoping no one will notice them there so just pull in that energy uh, at the 15th layer and so that we can start um, and and as I'm talking to Crystal I'm really talking to everyone here uh, how we could start taking responsibility for everything we create and now that we know that we create the one percent too, yikes, <laughs> we create the one percent in those reptilian energies, then we can uncreate them by not buying into all the fears. There's going to be more fears down the road. In fact, it's probably going to take, I'm guessing, around another two to three years for all of this garbage to un unfold and to release. Because energetically on a much bigger level give you the meta view is we have stepped into this golden age this new era uh, and everything that's falling away these darker energies uh, is takes time so in the bigger scheme of things two to three years is really not that much time at all and uh, so the more of us that take responsibility for ourselves and teach others how to do the same, staying in these high vibrations out of worry and fear and anger, those lower vibrating energies, then we're, we won't be feeding the beast. That's how they stay alive is with these lower vibrating energies. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Oops. Hey, Eddie, nice to have you here. Okay, here's that question um, by Unamazed. Being very aware at soul level of all yet unable to manifest in the world those visions and knowing. What piece is missing being blinded? Okay, so we're going to look at you specifically and amazed. Like, it's interesting, everybody's looking for blind spots. That's great. Um, <clears throat> in your sixth chakra, um, out to the third layer, there's a belief that you're holding in place uh, that you are not as powerful as you think you are. So we're just going to pull in this belief and let's see if there's any fears. Um, um, hang on, just checking to see if there's any fears. This is uh, kind of like spinning plates as everybody's in my six chakra. <laughs> I'll back all of you out a little bit. And um, so anyway, th those beliefs that you are not as powerful as you think. Three. 
So you have an outgrown guide in your sixth chakra that's holding uh, this, these programs in place. So let's pull this outgrown guide, uh, which is different than fear entities. They we release them the same, but outgrown guides are guides that we've worked with for, it could be many, many lifetimes, could be hundreds of lifetimes. But you've evolved past the point of how this one in particular operates. And uh, so the blind spot is where you can't quite see how powerful you really are. Okay, great. So we're just going to send that down the grounding. Okay, so seven, six. And then down in your heart, also out to that third layer. And this is that belief that you have to prove your worth and value. So there's still that thing going on in there. So we're just going to pull that into the core of your heart. And all the judgments that are held in place there. So um, it sounds like you're still trying to prove your worth and value to your, your mom. Yeah, not so much your dad, not so much a religion, but um, for your mom, trying to get her approval. In fact, she's courted to your heart. So we're going to do two things here. We're going to pull that energy out of the heart. We're just going to drop it down. But we're also going to go into the core of your heart, and we're going to pull her out gently. <laughs> Never cut cords. It leaves residual energy. So there, we're just going to send that energy back to her so you don't have to keep you know, pulling, feeling her pulling on your heartstrings. And that may have been one of the blind spots. Maybe you didn't even notice that she was plugged in there. So now she's out. And if you start feeling that guilty feeling again, like you need to prove your worth and value to her, go into your heart, remove her, and um, that'll, that'll help. Four. So um, that's that. Hope I got it all. <laughs> at least uh, that was what you're looking at today. All right, let's see what else we have. Um, uh, here's another question. How to achieve neutrality to not feed those energies we are better not we are better off not feeding into how to create neutrality um good question <laughs> yeah so when we're when there's a charge on these energies then we are no longer neutral so i think that really it's really um it's really more of a judgment like we maybe we're even judging ourselves that we even create this one percent of reptilian energies it's like how could we do that that would that's a horrible thing why would we even want to do that and there may be some of you that that are like not even on board with me with that and that's okay i just i that just tells me that you haven't um there's not enough awakening there's not enough awareness there's not enough consciousness yet to understand and, and know that concept. And that's okay. <laughs> In time, <laughs> and hopefully not too much time because time is wasting away, which is actually, that's, that's not even true either. <laughs> time is only a, another construct of man. It's another one of those uh, things that man made to control us. Uh, just another one of those things. I digress. Um, so, <laughs> uh, being judgmental about this, being judgmental, let's make sure that we're, we're not judging ourselves for even having created this 1% reptilian energies. <clears throat> let's see if there is any of that. There's not. Oh, good. <laughs> so good. Um, but uh, where, how else can we be neutral to this? That's, that's such a good question. Is, um, so not judging ourselves staying in these high vibrations and we just realize that when we're in these higher vibrations we're, we're just really less charged about everything we're like we we're just less triggered um that's that's what i would say is get in those higher vibrations and then you we won't be triggered um what else any other questions comments 
Shneva. Um, thanks for explaining about the voice. I held back so much in that area. It's true, you know. Um, <clears throat> and I'll just say another thing about the voice. And Agatha says she feels free as a dove. That's great. Um, as another thing I just want to say about the voice <clears throat> is that um, it's also a, a really charged area. It's an area where um, it's the most common place uh, that we can get killed is at the throat because we can get choked, we can get hung, um, slit our throat, the guillotine, break our neck, um, etc., etc. But it's the most common place where we get killed. And so it's an, often a place where we hold a lot of residual energy at the throat. This is why diabetes is very common. That's a, a disease from the thyroid, which is right in the throat. So stepping into the power of our voice is a lot easier <clears throat> when we can clear all of these old residual energies. So let's just take a minute to do that. And, you know, we just keep finding more and more pieces and other layers. You, keep, you guys keep showing up. We just keep little bits and pieces. And for those of you who, like, this is just not happening fast enough for you, like, you have more stuff to clear or you want it to happen faster. And so maybe you want to work with me. Uh, this is what I do for a living. And uh, the place to start is to get a personal vibrational temperature report. Um, you can find that in the, the threads of... Um, in the links and on my Facebook uh, Facebook and on Instagram but also on my website Kimberly Sherry.com s-h-e-r-r-y and Kimberly with an L-y uh, so um, yeah so if you want to work with me that's where everyone starts so it's a very valuable 17 page report that measures about 40 calibrations without knowing anything about you or ever speaking to you uh, so that's where I start, and then you know where you are, I know where you are, and then we have a starting point. So let's just clear some of these energies at the throat where you have a hard time speaking up. Um, there's about five past lives where we're clearing, where you got killed for speaking your truth, speaking up. So this is why it's hard for many of you to speak up and speak into your truth because you start bumping up against these old energies and then it stops you and you, you step back or you bite your tongue or you, you, know, you don't want to rock the boat, you don't want to get killed again. Not that that would literally happen, but it feels like that. So we're just draining these energies out of your throat. Sending it down the grounding so that you can step into uh, speaking up, speaking your truth, setting clear boundaries, asking for what you need, expressing what you prefer. <sighs> yes, even I can breathe it a little easier there. Okay, that's great. Well, that's about all we have time for today. Um, I'll just take one quick last peek here on Instagram, make sure there's no other pertinent questions. Mm. I meant to insert, but not, but nothing is clear. The gardener is here, lovely. <laughs> so Nadia, as much as I'd like to feel and be in communication with my higher self, I meditate, etc., but nothing is there. A blockage I can clear. So I don't know if you're if you're saying that you um, are you saying that you're having a hard time finding the blocks, or you're having a hard time hearing the communication. It's actually two different things. Um, but either way, uh, hang on just a second. So learning how to, to trust your higher intelligence, your, that inner voice, it takes a lot of practice. And a really powerful and simple way of learning to discern between 
which is a, a voice you should listen to and which is something you should avoid, is to ask the question, like you get an inspiration, is you ask, is this pure source energy? If you get nothing less than an immediate yes, then you would ignore that inspiration, you would ignore that direction, and you would say, thanks for sharing, but yeah, I'm not gonna go there. Um, because, you know, darkness comes disguised as, as light, and until we move out of this duality of light and dark and yin and yang and all of that, which we are eventually moving to, but we're not there yet, um, then we have to pay attention to this and that's a really simple question to ask. Is this pure source energy? Because pure source will feel uh, encouraging, supportive. It will feel light and helpful. It won't feel scary. It won't feel doubtful. It won't feel uncertain. It'll feel confident and it's gonna feel inspiring and it's gonna feel exciting. Hang on, just a minute. <laughs> wait for that to die down a minute <laughs> timing is everything right <laughs> so um, that's a really simple way to, to discern that let's check one last thing okay so Nadia yes so you talking about a thyroid lump yes and um, yes yeah, so you, you still have a probably a lot of stuff uh, in your throat that you've been trying to clear. So talking about blind spots, uh, when you do clearings, uh, pay attention to your throat and, and clearing energies there. You are so welcome and blessings to all of you and, and thank you all of you for showing up. Come back again on Friday, same time, 11.11. While we're I'm while I'm in this time zone in the northern hemisphere, and uh, to, on Friday I'm going to be talking more about this energy and and how we create this one percent and reptilian energies. I think it's the best news ever <laughs> to realize that we create that, and so if we create it, we can uncreate it. So that's super exciting to me. So thank you all for joining today and uh, we'll see you Friday. And until then, keep asking my favorite question, how, how does it get any better than this or that? <laughs> Realizing about the 1%, I wonder. So see you on Friday and until then, sending much blessings, namaste. <laughs>